ಮುಖಂಕರೋತಿಸ್ಪತಿಸ್ಪತಿಸ್ಪತಿಸ್ಪತಿಸ್ಪತಿಸ್ಪತಿಸ್ಪತಿಸ್ಪತಿಸ್
who controls everything within the creation, and still he remains the supreme separate identity, distinct from all manifested material creation. In the Bhagavad Gita 9.4 to 5, it is therefore said to, the, to be Yogeshwara. Everything rests on the potency of Lord Shri Krishna, and still the Lord is different from and transcendental to all those identities. In the Vedic Purusha Shukta of the Rig Mantra, this is also confirmed. The philosophical truth of simultaneous oneness and difference was propounded by Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and it is known as Achintya Bheda Tattva. Brahma, Narada and all of the others are simultaneously one with the Lord and different from the Supreme Lord. We are all one with him, just as gold ornaments are one in quality with the go stock gold, but the individual gold ornament is never equal in quantity with the stock gold. The stock gold is never exhausted even if there are innumerable ornaments em emanating from the neck because the stock is Purnam, complete. Even if Purnam is deducted from Purnam, still the Supreme Purnam remains the same Purnam. The fact is unconceivable to our present imperfect senses. Lord Chaitanya therefore defined his philosophy, his theory of philosophy as a chinta, inconceivable, and as confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita as well in the Bhagavatam, Lord Chaitanya Dev theory of a chinta bheda bheda tattva is perfect philosophy of the absolute truth. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, over to you. Hare Krishna. All glories to Shiguru and Shiguranga. Well, glories to our Iskon, BBT founder, Charya, Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Sri Prabhupada, who is in the line of Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Well, thank you so much for having me in your association today. We are continuing our study of Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 2, Chapter 6, verses uh, 13 through 16. And the title of this chapter is The Cosmic manifestation. So this is uh, continuing to let us understand Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Sri Shukadeva Goswami is answering Maharaj Brika's questions, as we know, about Krishna, about the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So these verses together, they are part of one verse, really, uh, describing how everything and everyone that we see uh, is the energy of Bhagavan, Krishna, uh, but uh, he is transcendental to this, um, to all of this. Is beyond it. Srila Prabhupada begins to purport that the Supreme Personality of Godhead by his partial representation as the super soul, measuring not more than nine inches, expands by his potent energy in the shape of the universal form, which includes everything manifested in different varieties of organic and inorganic materials. The manifested varieties are therefore not different from the Lord just as golden ornaments of different shapes are non-different from the original stock reserve of gold. In other words, the Lord is the supreme person who controls everything, and still he remains the supreme separate identity. He is therefore said to be Yogeshwar, or the Lord of all yogis, Ishwar. And Srila Prabhupada uh, quotes this verse from Ninth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, which we can uh, review, this 9.4. Uh, the chapter is the most confidential knowledge. 
And the text, Maya Tatam Idam Sarvam Jagadidakta Murtina Matsdani Sarvabhutani Na Chaham Teshu Vashtita. Translation By me, in my unmanifested form, this entire universe is pervaded. All beings are in me, but I am not in them. And then the purport, the Supreme Personality of God is, is not perceivable through the gross material senses. It is said, Atashi Krishna Namadi, Nabaved Gram, Indirai, Sevan Mukehi Jivadel, Swayameva Svaradhita. Lord Sri Krishna's name, fame, pastimes, etc. cannot be understood by material senses. Only to one who is engaged in pure loving service under proper guidance is he revealed. In the Brahma Samhita, it is stated that Premanjana Charita Bhakti Velo Chanena, Shantas Sadaiva Ridhiyesha Velo Kayanti. One can see the Supreme Personality of God Govinda always within himself and outside himself if one has developed a transcendental loving attitude towards him. Here it is said that although he is all-pervading, everywhere present, he is not conceivable by the material senses. This is indicated by the word avyakta murchina, but actually, although we cannot see him, everything is resting in him. As we have discussed in the seventh chapter, the entire material cosmic manifestation is only a combination of its two different energies, the spiritual and the material. Just as the sunshine is spread all over the universe, the energy of the Lord is spread all over the creation, and everything is resting in that energy. So we're given the example of the sun. I think the sun is still there in the sky, uh, or maybe not. So the sun is shining for so long. The sun rays, the light, the heat. But the sun doesn't disappear. And uh, just because this, the room of our house is lit by the sun, uh, we have light in the room of the house by the sun. It is not that the sun is there, right? Of course not. The house would burn up, the whole town would burn up, and <laughs> the whole earth would disappear. But uh, the uh, the sunlight is non different than the sun. It is the without the sun globe, there is no sunlight. We don't have the photons emanating from. We don't have the electromagnetic radiation of the sun. So the sunlight, from one perspective, is the sun. Yes. And from another perspective, it's not the, the complete sun. The other example is the cow. The milk is the energy of the cow. It comes from the cow. Uh, it is non-different than the cow from one perspective. But we don't have a cow in our hand when we're drinking a cup of milk. So this is simultaneous, oneness, and different, both. The cup of milk is the cow, the cow's energy, but it's not the whole cow. Sometimes uh, we will meet people or we will hear people say that everything is God. Uh, this is monism or pantheism. That's another name, pantheism, that everything, that God has become everything. Uh, the goat is God, the stomach is God, the fire is God, the ant, everything is, you're God, I'm God. So this is true, in a sense, as we just discussed. The missing point is that we are the energy of God. We're, we're not, the roach is not the supreme, powerful. We're not. One one bad migraine headache and we're on the floor. We're we're in bed. <laughs> we're not. Uh, uh, as His Divine Grace pointed out, a certain uh, yogi, very famous, world famous yogi, uh, promoted this. We're all God. Everyone is Narayan. But uh, some bad toothache. They they were ruined. <laughs> the, all the conversation stopped. So this this is it's. Uh, it's a very odd thing that uh, people don't think about what they're saying or something. It's almost uh, magical that someone could think like this, that the dog is God. Really? 
<laughs> I don't think so. But then again, the, the God, the dog is God. It's a the there's nothing but God's energy. So we might ask that why is this? How why don't such people accept or why don't why do they think this that because they want to that's why they want to if the goat is god and my stomach is god what does it matter if the goat is in my stomach truly yeah they say like this there's some staunch impersonalists uh, they're, they're spiritual they they have some god consciousness sometimes they're very clean and you know verminical but uh, their thinking is warped. <laughs> it only goes to a certain point and it stops there because they want to. That's why. Just like uh, sometimes we go to buy a car, perhaps, and uh, the salesman is saying a used car. Oh, this is a good car. Yes, this will last you a long time. But they know that the engine is going to fail <laughs> after a year. So why do they do that? Why does their mouth move like? Because they want to. They, they want the money. They want the money. So they will, their mouth will say anything. Or sometimes a man is talking to a woman and they'll say anything. So that is one of the our failings as a human being that we will uh, take truth and throw it out the window if it suits our purpose. Right? We will... Uh, we accept what's convenient. We have that ability. I don't know if it's an ability, but we have that capacity, all of us. And we do that. We pick and choose what we will accept according to how it suits us. So because these persons have very strong desires to do certain things, uh, uh, very lustful and rebellious, uh, like a child, uh, uncontrolled. So therefore, they don't want to. That That's why it's useless to try and speak to someone who's not a, a little submissive or a little who's genuinely interested in understanding. Uh, they already have decided what they're going to accept. We should be careful not to waste our time with such people. That this that I can talk to this person till I'm blue in the face. They won't they will not accept. Although it is true, isn't it? Sometimes we will say something to our children and they won't agree right then. But they'll think about it. They will. And even maybe they'll you'll see them change their activities. They won't say that they're agreeing with you, but actually they think about it. And uh, sometimes, and they will change. So it, it, in that sense, it's not necessarily useless to try to debate with someone. And if there are others listening, uh, it is a great opportunity for other people to understand the arguments. Just like sometimes we have Harinam or we invite people or satsang. And so someone will be arguing, well, why Krishna this? Why Krishna that? And it seems useless to talk to this person. But the other people around are listening to the logical explanations and, oh, yeah, right, yes, I agree, okay. So they become, they become enlightened, you see. So sometimes there is uh, some value in debating with someone who wants to argue, well, God is one, everything is God. So you can do something for a little while if it's useful. But no, uh, the cow is not the milk and the gold mine is not the little ring. And uh, there is, as Krishna says, uh, there is Krishna and his energies. So Sridhar Prabhupada goes on, one should not conclude that because he's spread all over, he has lost his personal existence. To refute such an argument, the Lord says, I am everywhere and everything is in me, but still I'm aloof. So how does he do that? Yogeshwara. He is uh, the supreme mystic. Uh, 
how can God do that? How, how could someone exist in a form and at the same time millions of planets are coming by the energy and there uh, is so much manifestation but Krishna is completely separate from all of that? Well, the sun is separate. The sun is there and so much. What does this think about? Think. See, the thing is do we think? Or do we have time to think? Our life is so busy. Sometimes people bandy about God, but they don't think what that means. So, uh, Krishna or God means inconceivable power. Oh, how can he do it? You can't fully understand. See, that? That's this is the a sticking point. Uh, very important for people to to get past that I'm not going to be that God Krishna is not something I can completely understand. Bas, that's it. Just can't. All we can do is offer respect. Oh, Krishna, you're so amazing. Ishwara Parama Krishna, Satchitananda Vigraha, Anadi Radhi, Govinda, Savakarma Karyam, Aham Savasri Prabhava, Mata Savam Prabhava. We just glorify it. Krishna's amazing. Krishna's inconceivable. He does amazing things. He appears in different incarnations. He manifests the sun and all the planets and the galaxies. He's in my heart. He's in everyone's heart. He's giving everyone ideas. He's providing, uh, what is that? Gyanam smitram apahoanam cha. Travasita hamridi sanibhasta matta smitr gyanam apahoanam cha. It's just inconceivable and wondrous. You know, people, right? We we like exciting things, many of us. You know, something exciting, amazing. But Krishna is amazing. He's real. He's so amazing. Uh, people sometimes uh, experiment with drugs uh, to go to alternate ways of uh, experiencing things. Just like there's certain anesthetics uh, that... Uh, People take them because the uh, the vision, the uh, perception, altered perception, the, the eyes and the ears, and the, they don't work in a normal way. <laughs> you, just, you look at things and things are moving and different colors. and It's just a, a different experience. And so sometimes people take drugs for that reason to uh, boredom. So Krishna is oh exciting, really. Just think about that. Uh, think about Lord Krishna, how he is in Goloka Vrindavan and manifested in the Narayan forms of Vaikuntha. And so many things are going on right now, right now. And all of this earth spinning in space and all the planets and the galaxies, Krishna is aloof. Just like uh, it's not so uh, unreasonable. It's not something that we don't know. There are uh, chief executive officers of big companies, and they're playing golf. They're on vacation in the Maldives. And big, big company with 60,000, 100,000 employees is going on, right? So busy. They have offices in different countries and and the person is on their boat on the ocean, <laughs> at least sometimes. So uh, if that is possible, even for a human by arrangement, so God, God does it like this. Yogeshwar. Uh, everything is going on by his arrangement. So then are we responsible or are we not? Is God, is God responsible for everything or not? And our understanding is no. Just like the chief executive officer of a company. If you as an employee want to take special training and you uh, want to advance to a different position, you can do that. The chief executive officer is not going to just uh, one day wake up and, and call Australia. Oh, uh, this this one, uh, promote, promote this woman to this position. He's not going to do that for no reason. But uh, there is a system. That if you want to get promotion, go to different department, you can do that. 
It's up to you. So we give thanks to the chief executive officer that the opportunity is there. And we give thanks that the resources are there. But the chief executive officer usually doesn't bless anyone and he doesn't curse. He doesn't just wake up in the morning and, uh, yes, the, the one in the Nairobi office, fire them tomorrow for no reason. No, it depends upon our activities. So this is the mature understanding of our relationship with Krishna, that he does not bless anyone and he does not curse anyone, but uh, we, uh, we, we uh, uh, should certainly always feel very grateful to him uh, for all the different arrangements that he has made that we can take advantage of. Uh, of course, the best arrangement is that we can go home. We can go back to the spiritual world we can revive our relationship with him. And we understand that this is the whole purpose of human life. The best purpose of human life. Uh, just like suppose, uh, you know, suppose someone gave you some drug, you know, some ketamine or some kind of drug and puts you in some dream world and you're dreaming of so many things and it's a whole experience, but it's a false experience. We don't belong. That's not our real life. And so this, this life that we have, although it seems very real, and it is real temporarily, it's not our, it's, it's a dream. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a dream. Uh, and Krishna is allowing us to have that dream. Krishna is allowing us to dream of being happy without him. Not us, not you, because we, we are on the path of devotion. Uh, but in general, the material world is, in our, is fulfilling uh, very kindly. Krishna is just like a father. Suppose you, so I want to go, uh, go to this, I want to go to South Africa. I'm going to get my apartment. I'm not going to live here anymore. So the, the father may know that this is going to be a very difficult job for you. Uh, everything, you're going to be doing it. You're only 19 years old. I don't think you should do that. Don't do that. But if the, if the girl insists, no, I want, I'm legal age, I'm going to be independent. Then out of love, even the father and mother will pay the rent. All right, we'll pay the rent six months. Because they love the daughter. Or they love the son. But they know this is probably not the best thing for you to do. But if you insist, we can't, we're not going to tie you up and keep you in the house. We can't do that. You are a person. You're an individual person. Uh, and so we must honor your free will. And you will learn whatever lessons you need to learn. So it is just like that that Krishna loves us so much that I want to, I wish I could uh, forget you and I could be just Krishna. I can be you <laughs> and I can just live without you. And of course, that's ridiculous, but Krishna, uh, he's not going to force us because we're not robots. Oh, why can't God just make me good? Because it would, uh, I mean, theoretically he could, but uh, it would be against our free will. We have free will, and that's it. You know, out of laziness or something, we may not want to accept that, but uh, we have free will. And our life, what we're experiencing is no one's, uh, we are responsible for what we're experiencing today. Not Krishna. Not anyone else. Uh, so that that that's a that's a, a lesson of maturity, and very important for us to accept deeply as devotees that I am responsible for all the happiness and all the challenges that happen in my life. No one else, which can be hard, you know, when because you know some, it's, sometimes you know, life can be really painful. Very painful. 
emotionally painful, physically painful, financially painful, and it's suffering. And you feel like uh, we feel like we're going crazy sometimes. It's just so much to deal with. And it's, you know, it's only natural that we want to blame someone else, you know, blame our husband, blame our parents, blame God. But really, there's no one to blame except us, truly. Which doesn't mean that perhaps other people have instrumentally uh, helped us to make wrong decisions. That's true. We could have had parents that didn't discipline us, that weren't attentive. Were we studying? Were we uh, thinking about the future? And that is their fault. That is that is a mistake on their part. And uh, they some they will have the result of, of their own their own activities themselves. But why did we have those kind of parents? Why were we born in a family that the parents were careless? There's other people who are born in, into families and the parents are very attentive. They make sure we're clean and we're neat and we're obedient and we talk properly and we study, right? There's families like that. There's families that are very religious, families that are irreligious. People are born into families without a mother, without a father. So why? Because something that's our karma. You see, and ultimately, someone may say, well, why am I in this world? Why do I have to deal with any of it? Because we've rejected Krishna. That's why. So ultimately, we are responsible. And uh, Srila Prabhupada um, advises us that, you know, the deeper that we can accept us, the more peaceful we will be. We'll stop feeling ourselves to be a victim. Even materially, uh, counselors caution against this victim mentality. Oh, I'm a victim. These people are my employees, my children, my parents, the government. I'm a victim. I'm, I'm, they're doing it to me. And perhaps there are malicious thinking people, or there are people who are, uh, who could stop doing something that hurts you. Uh, but we're not a victim in the sense that we're innocent. You know, oh, I, I, I don't deserve this. Yes, you do. Yes, you do, actually. You may not remember one life, two life, three lives ago, how you cheated this person or how you abused this person, how you mistreated, how you were not grateful, how you did this or did that. But now the lesson is coming back to you. So Srila Prabhupada, uh, in the 12th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, explains, uh, as we discussed uh, a few times, that this is a very powerful, very empowering way to be peace, more peaceful and cheerful no matter what happens. So as Srila Prabhupada, I think it's in the 8th verse of the 12th chapter, something like that, 6th, 8th. So he describes that when the devotee is in uh, a difficult situation, the devotee thinks Krishna is helping me uh, to not experience more so, which is true. Uh, I, I, if it weren't for Krishna consciousness, the experience of this difficulty would be much more painful. I'd be drinking right now. <laughs> but uh, because of the wisdom, because of the um, processes of bhakti, uh, it is easier. And when the devotee has some good thing that happens, uh, the devotee, oh, I, this, I'm so grateful to Krishna. I'm not sure I even really deserve this. I, more than I deserve. I'm sure I've done so many things. So in this way, the devotee uh, can avoid, can reduce the tendency to be vengeful. I'm going to get back at this. This person told my boss this. This person is talking behind my back. This person cheated me buying the car. I'm going to get them back. Why? I should get myself back. I'm the one who did it. You see? So this greatly reduces the tendency to be uh, uh, vengeful and resentful. Which doesn't mean that we should just let people walk all over us. No. We are not obliged to let someone emotionally or physically abuse us, especially repeatedly. 
but it, it somehow we're in a difficult situation. So just like Lord Jesus Christ, this is the most famous example, or one of them, he was being crucified. And what did he say? That uh, Father forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. They're out of their mind. So this is one. And then we started that last week about Lord Nityananda, right? So one of them, Jagai or Malay, was saying, I'm going to cut you up into small pieces and throw you in the river. So instead, instead of becoming really offended, as maybe I would become offended or frightened. You know, oh, that, that's great. That, that's a good idea. But please chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> Just love Krishna. So he had no, no, uh, this uh, uh, victim mentality. Oh, you're hurting me. So those are, those are extreme examples. And then Haridas Thakur, he was being beaten by the Muslim soldiers. And they were ordered to beat him until he died. So they were becoming very frightened that they would be uh, punished because he wasn't dying. So he realized that and uh, he uh, faked, he, he put himself so he looked like he died. So they wouldn't have to, <laughs> they wouldn't have to suffer. <laughs> Just uh, incredible. You know, he was being beaten. I mean, beaten. I mean, there's no joke. He was very bad. Um, but Lord Chaitanya personally uh, protected his mind, uh, so he did not feel very much. So this is uh, this is Krishna consciousness. This is the, the one of the wonderful benefits of uh, love of Krishna. And this transcendental. Uh, personality uh, not disturbed or not as disturbed by what's going on so that that's isn't that wealthy i mean what kind of power is that even a little bit we all know people even us i mean i'm human but certainly people around us you know they get a little something wrong with their face and they're all upset and they're thinking about it or you know some little problem and it just miserable and we're freed of that or we can be freed from all of that so much uh, and yes we do experience difficulties but it's reduced that if, when we follow the path of Lord Krishna uh, then we become more and more transcendental like him able to manifest uh, amazing character and personality. Uh, our ISKCON founder, Charya, Srila Prabhupada, uh, before he departed the uh, last few months, uh, just uh, also right not long ago, uh, one can uh, read the conversation. The doctor said ordinarily the bones pressing on the nerves, the person would be in agony. But he didn't show that. He was transcendental. <laughs> That's it's so cool. Uh, and so that is a benefit even within this life. Manmana Baba Man Bato Yajiri Mamanamaskuru. The one who always thinks of me, becomes my devotee, worships me, and bow down to me. At the end of this life, they come to me. Whatever one thinks of, one attains that at the time of death. Those who worship the demigods go to the demigods. Those who worship the ghosts go to the ghosts. And those who worship me, who become my bhakta, who are devoted to me, who love me, they come to me. I promise you this, Arjuna, because you're very, you're my very dear friend. So this is this we understand to be the goal of life, to revive our awareness of Krishna, our understanding of Krishna, to act uh, in that relationship. Uh, what is that? Sambandha. These are the these are the three career goals of so we have our, it's a career path. Sambandha to understand the relationship with Krishna, Abhideya to act, to do the things in that relationship, and prayojana 
to uh, awaken more and more our genuine uh, love of Krishna, devotion to Krishna. Why should we not love Krishna? There's nothing but Krishna. But the nature of this material world is, is the forgetfulness of Krishna. Krishna? Who's Krishna? What's Krishna? <laughs> it's a madhouse. It is. It is. It, it's a dream world. And we are waking up from the dream by the association of pure devotees who are awake. So our path is to stay awake and to stay near people who are awake. And even if we start to go to sleep again or more asleep, uh, we should never go away from the, We should never think, oh, uh, and we can advise people that whatever you're doing, don't stop hearing about Krishna. Don't ever think, oh, I'm too fallen. I'm too sinful. Uh, how can I chant? How can I uh, go to the temple? No, no, no. Don't think like that. Never think like that. Always. Um, try to stay near Krishna. If we do that, ultimately, everything will be okay. Really. Just like the sun, when it, uh, it is said that when uh, there's someone urinates on the ground, let's say a dog or someone, the sun will purify that area eventually, uh, evaporate, and the nature of the sun rays is to purify. So uh, that's why if one very good thing to dry clothes in the sun because uh, they get very purified. Uh, so we stay near Krishna, um, just like we stay near the fire, and eventually we will we will uh, completely awaken. So this is the example uh, Maharaj Parikit is showing us, and so many different pure devotees are showing of associating with Mahatmas, with Bhakti Vedantas, with uh, lovers of Krishna. Uh, and eventually we will uh, become fully awakened ourselves and go home, uh, go back to Godhead, become purified of our tendency to want to dream. It's very deep rooted. Uh, maybe someone, some of us do know, but it's likely that many of us don't really know how deep, how deep is this habit of trying to uh, stay here and be happy. It's a very deep, because that's what we do, right? We, right, to pay the mortgage and pay the rent and feed and to get the clothes. We're trying to stay alive, aren't we? And it's a, it's a, this fruit of activity to, to, to make it in this world and to live in this world. It's very deep rooted. Uh, but eventually we want to uh, give up. Uh, I mean, we have to keep, we have to give up the idea that we can be happy forever in this world. That's we need to, and it's very deep rooted. This idea that, I don't know, somehow if I could just, marry the right person or get the right job or if I could live in the right place or this or that, then life would be wonderful forever. It's very deep-rooted. Um, so it takes time. Therefore, Bahunam Janmanam Antek Yanamam Prabhajate Vasudevam Savamiti Sa Mahatma Siddharlava Lord Krishna says, after many births and deaths. And Srila Prabhupada, I read in uh, one or two lectures, he said that part of this birth after birth, and part of this Vasudevam Savamiti is to realize I can never be happy forever in this world. The only place I can be happy is with Krishna in the spiritual world, and I want to go there. I'm done with this place. I'm done trying to find the perfect husband, the perfect wife, the perfect this. It's never going to happen. And so that is a Narcha that is getting free of material contamination to become more fixed in this wisdom. And a re I mean, really believe it. So this is sannyas. You know, whether we wear the dress of a sannyasi or not, this is the mentality. I am only for Krishna. Krishna is only for me. And that's the only thing in my life is Krishna, which doesn't mean we don't care for others, but it's just our focus is different. 
I love Krishna. I want to be with Krishna. I don't want to try and be happy in this world uh, as a permanent uh, goal. I give up. Sarvadama Pariyata. I give myself to you, Krishna. I marry you. I'm yours. And you're mine. So this is our path of sadhana. And as we as we follow the process, Krishna will arrange. Hopefully, not too difficult. But Krishna will arrange that we become free. Uh, and that's kindness. And it's it's not easy. It's not. Sometimes the purging uh, is, uh, you know, it's just like a hospital, some treatment for disease, uh, like cancer, the chemotherapy. It's not fun. But uh, hopefully you become free of the cancer and then you're healthy again. So it's like that. So it, this is, we don't want to uh, scare anyone away. <laughs> but, uh, you know, let, let's let's be very open that uh, we will experience some difficult situations. And the, the idea is, is that we will become, uh, we will give up us. Oh, I, I just give up trying to be happy in this world. I'm just going to focus on Krishna. So that's a plus. I, what's the other example we talk about is that a coach, right? Swimming team, something Olympic. They are hard. You're up at 5 a.m., right? And you are at it. Five, six hours a day. It's grueling. But then you win, you might you might win the Olympic man. So it, it, there's some difficult. Oh, well, then why should I be a devotee? Well, you're never going to get away from struggle. There's always, oh, if I could just, I won't be a devotee anymore. I won't have to struggle. <laughs> Don't believe it. It's just, which goal are we going to go for? You know? Any any good goal, you have to put in the work, right? So so, you know, so we accept that. Krishna is not giving me a, a, a pleasant, easy time always, uh, because he's a good coach. He's a good father. He knows what I need. He's a good. Te he's trying to take me back to the spiritual world. I told him that's what I want. I forgot that maybe it will take a little bit of difficulty. <laughs> so we have to remind ourselves that, oh this is good for me this is now I have another chance this place stinks and I should not invest my heart in it I should invest my heart in the spiritual side does everyone appreciate this point at least theoretically I am reminding myself this is real stuff, and this is this will help us to become greatly stable and uh, attain the goal. Good stuff. So I'll stop here. Uh, any questions or discussion? Hare right, Krishna Prabhuji, thank you. Thank you for today's class, and it was powerful, especially um, when you said that uh, uh, Krishna is not responsible for whatever uh, challenges and difficulties you have. Um, and um, uh, I, it got me thinking then uh, for people who uh, we've just finished the cause of all causes and they, which says that um, Krishna is the cause of all causes. So then isn't he responsible for the um, uh, difficulties and challenges and uh, um, setbacks that exp that you experience because he's the cause of all causes. Well, he's the cause of all causes of the system that is set up. How we work the system is up to us. In that sense, he's the cause of all causes. But he's not, he doesn't override free will. So he's, he's in that sense, he's the cause of the system. He's the cause of the arrangement. 
but we're the ones who wanted the arrangement. See that that we're the ones who wanted the arrangement of trying to be separate from him. So he is the cause of that or of granting us that arrangement. And he's not going to tie us up and force us to do something. So it's his kindness. Um, and we're the ones who who utilize the system. If we want, we can go back home, back to Godhead by associating with devotees. Or, or if we can go deeper into sinful activities and suffer. That's not his choice. I'm not the who forced me to rob the bank or to eat the meat. Or, it's my choice. It's my choice. He didn't do it. Krishna come in my bedroom and forced me to drink the liquor. No. Well, why? But, but what you're saying is that why am I even faced with the choice of drinking or not drinking? Because you wanted to be separate. I wanted to be separate. That's why. And Krishna tried to convince me. I said, just like any child, don't do that. No, no, no. I want it. I want. It. All right. I'll pay six months' rent even. <laughs> Krishna doesn't just pay six months' rent. He gives so much constantly, even for our ignorance. We're doing stupid things. And um, because we want it, he simultaneously provides wisdom and advice not to do it. And at the same time, he provides facilities so we can try and eventually get tired of it. Because he knows eventually we will give up. So that's just, that's, that's what's happened. Is that all right? Yes, Prabhuji, thank you so much for that clarification. And another question, are there any other questions? I know we have exhausted our time from the group. If there are no questions from the group, I'll quickly ask another question, Prabhuji. Uh, for people who are in this victim mentality that... Uh, uh, why me and it always is um, uh, everybody else's fault and not my fault and these circumstances how do we um, counsel them I, I know there is an element of low self esteem in them but um, how how do we help them and uh, within to... ourselves or, or anyone else yeah even within ourselves and anyone else I was talking of anyone else but uh, Yes, within ourselves would also be yeah. a good Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, I don't think there's, of course, any any magic button uh, necessarily that, that would just flip a switch uh, in the person's thinking. It's possible. Um, you know, generally, you know, I, I have found and others that the first thing is to uh, empathize with the person that, you know, what is the difficulty that they're going through? And yes, it sounds, it is very challenging and difficult. Uh, and uh, revisit or remind the person of what's going on. And they may not be able to accept, they may be out of their mind with struggle. Frankly, that is not uncommon. It's just so, it just, you have the children, you have the work, you have relatives, you have headaches, you have knee pain, you have to cook, you have this. It's just, it's just too much, too much. And someone is telling you that it's, you know, some philosophy. It's just, so therefore, a peaceful moment. You know, when the person is uh, perhaps not in the middle of the crisis um, and they're able to, uh, think that's the better time to better time to try and offer wisdom okay. more hope that uh it will click that oh yes yeah i know and even we can we can empathize that I, I know it's really difficult but but try please try and remember that you know this uh Ultimately, we are responsible. You'll become more peaceful. You'll feel a little better. You will. Uh, instead of blaming others. And then you're just more angry. And it's just unpleasant, really, all of that. 
although it may feel good at the moment, right? Sometimes we feel good that we're angry at someone and we're thinking about what we're going to say to them, right? It's a kind of pleasure. Uh, but really, it's not pleasant. So taking responsibility can help can help me, can help you uh, just become more peaceful and able to deal with the situation more more effectively with a cooler head, with be more calm, be more calm about it. Uh, just like in Srimad Bhagavatam, there are a, a number of instances where great sages said to someone that we didn't tell you the wisdom then because you weren't able to receive it. Even Jesus and Buddha said that uh, to, to their disciples, we would tell you more, but you're not able to hear it right now. So we're not going to waste our time, waste your time. You'll just get upset. So sometimes we have to wait for a better moment, a week, two weeks, a month. You know, sometimes they... Someone seems, even our own mind, we may need to wait for our own mind to calm down instead of just shoving Krishna consciousness into it. Yes. Uh, you know, if our mind, you know, at some point, you know, we're just really very upset and we're starting to become angry at Krishna. What is all this Krishna consciousness? <laughs> Better we don't think about it perhaps right now. And, you know, get some biscuits and milk or something, <laughs> take a nap. And, you know, then then put on the tape, then listen to the lecture. It's truly, you know, because, you know, we have to deal with our own mind just like another person, right? When your husband or your wife is really upset, that's not the time to be pushing some point, <laughs> right? You wait, unless it's some life-threatening situation. So it's the same with our own mind, Sometimes we have to let it calm down. Is that all right? Yes, Prabhuji. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. In the day, Kamataji, your mic is on. So uh, can I request you to end this session for today, please? Hare Krishna. Yes, thank you. Um, I would like to add something to your question. As Prabhuji said, you have to wait for the right time. Another thing is, that the Paramatma is sitting in everybody's heart. And the real is ongoing. He is recording all our actions. We don't remember our past life. What happens when we leave this body, we go to the abode of Yamaraj in Yampuri. And there, Chitra Gupta, the secretary of Yamaraj, his name is Chitra Gupta. Chitra means picture. Gupta means hidden. He take all the hidden um, cameras from our heart that the Paramatma has been watching us doing. And then it's open in front of us. What do we do then? We become, we get so, so, like we become sober. We say, oh, and did I do this? Did I do this? Did I do this to this person? Then we decide, I'm going back to remediate the situation. I'm going to be very nice to this person. So that's why we say, uh, uh, why bad things happen to good people. We were not good all the time. Now we are being good because we're in Krishna consciousness. Before, who were we? Do we know? Now this person that we have so, make him suffer so much or make her suffer so much, they come into our life again. And we are the best one to serve them, to love them, to give them everything. They stay with us for some time. They give us the joy that we, we, we want to experience. And suddenly, in the middle, they just leave us and they go. Be it a husband leave the wife early, be it a wife leaving the husband very early, being a young child leaving the parents early and going. So that is our suffering that we gave to that person in our previous life. Now we have decided to remedy the situation. They just leave us and go. And this is not me. This is all in Garud Quran. So this is how it happens. This is how it works. But if somebody is suffering, they are not ready to accept that because they will tell you, who knows what happened in my past life? But that is what has happened. Try to understand it. That is what has happened. So I'll just stop here. Thank you very much, Babuji. I will request everyone to please unmute and let's chant the Maha Mantra to glorify Gina Sarana Prabhuji. 
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे पंच कृष्ण पावन प्यो वैष्णव प्यो नमो नम ग्रंथ राज में भागवत की जय अनंत कोटि वैष्णव की जय शिला प्रभु पाद की जय इस ग्रह दिन असरला प्रभु जी की जय एल्डोरेट यात्रा की जय हरे कृष्णा थैंक यू एवरीवन थैंक यू हरे कृष्णा आई डोंट इवन रिमेंबर डज एनीवन रिमेंबर व्हाट दे हैड अ मंथ अगो ऑन संडे टू ईट फॉर लंच प्रभु जी इज नॉट संडे यस्टरडे I can't remember what I had for lunch last week on Thursday. Uh, yeah, so. you, you know, so yeah, yeah. we can't remember a past life. Yeah. <laughs> we can't even re- we can't remember so many things. Yeah. But there are there are so many uh, people who remember. So we can go in. Uh, what is Ian Stevenson? He 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 has the past life regression, and then the past life story. So many people remember, but then after some time they forget it. But it's better. Yeah. Krishna makes us forget because if we remember everything that has happened in our past life, you won't be able to survive in this life. It will be so traumatic. Yeah. So Krishna says, "Forget yeah. it." Even in the yeah. womb, we remember, and then you pray, "Oh Krishna, take me out of this uh, heinous situation." But the process yes. of taking birth yeah. is so so um, bad, so difficult, so painful that we forget everything. Krishna makes us forget. Hare Krishna thank you yes. thank you everyone thank you thank you all right Hare thank Krishna. you so much Hare Krishna for Hare having Krishna. me i wish everyone to remember krishna always and love him more and more i hope you will also bless me a little bit cuz i'm a very fallen soul prabhu ji we are all the same that's why we are here otherwise we would be fallen down this that's why we came here so we will support each other and hopefully krishna will hear our prayers Thank you so much Prabhu ji thank you Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna thank you so much